everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I wanted to give you a quick recap of the different skeins of yarn that we dyed in live streams this week. I dyed, I guess this is one, two, three, four different yarn bases using the same four colors of the Twilp One Step Tie Dye. Orange, red, fuchsia, and teal. And you can find all of these colors in the Luau set that I have linked to in the video description. This project started because my son Lucas and his friend decided to dye yarn together. And they both decided, we, they hand painted the Knit Picks Cotton Boucle yarn with these four colors. I let the yarn sit with the tie dye on it for over two days before I rinsed it out. And we got really, really deep saturated tones. In the first live stream, I decided to use the leftover dye for some low immersion dyeing. And I think it's interesting that the colors we got here are significantly more muted than the ones that I let sit for 24 hours or for over 48 hours. Uh, this was the, oh, the, <laughs> I had to think for a second. This was Knit Picks Dishy yarn. Um, so it's 300 grams total. And I used only, I also used very little dye. I think that there was a lot more dye on the skein than there was on these. And in, in addition to the difference in the amount of time to let the heat set, to let the colors set. And I think that they're both beautiful in their own right. The orange was closest to an edge. And so of all the colors, that was the least vibrant from the kettle. With the leftover dye in the pot, I added just some Swish DK yarn, which is 100% superwash merino. And then I added bits of turquoise to it, which brought this leftover pink that was behind in the pot, brought out some more purples with these flecks of turquoise. And I just thought that it was fun to show something so subtle and soft. Uh, compared that came out of all of these tones with these brights. A few days later, I did another live stream where I decided to play with my favorite dry rub technique, where I started with dry yarn, I added the dye to a dish pan, and I just rubbed the dry yarn around in the dye to create these beautiful non-repeating colorways. So in the first one, I did just the orange and red, and we got really great coverage. There's some speckling in the yarn. The orange and the red are very, very similar in the way that they sort of show up in the yarn together. But there is still, you can tell that there's a distinct tone difference in some of those areas. Next, I used the fuchsia red and turquoise. And I did the fuchsia sort of on half the skein. Here, this one I'll open up because um, this one I did a little more planning on. Um, I did fuchsia on about half the skein. Sorry, this was the fuchsia red on the other half, and then I did the teal throughout, layering them, and this gave us these beautiful variegated speckles and tones. And there's still a remarkable amount of white left behind. I think it's key when you're rinsing these out that you don't want to let them sit in the rinse water when the color starts bleeding off. I mean, you can choose to do that, but you might end up pulling, sucking some of that up into your white areas. And if you want to keep the white parts a little more white, then you want to make sure that you're changing the water um, pretty quickly, especially at the beginning. And then with each of these, I steamed them for, I think, 20 minutes in a steamer basket to set the color. And so just a little bit of heat, you can get tones that are pretty much as saturated as just leaving it at room temperature for a long time. Um, some of these tones are a little more muted because of the way that they mixed, but that's still sort of a nice option. Mixing more of the colors together, and I think this one had orange, red, maybe it had all four, maybe it had some fuchsia and teal in here as well. I don't remember exactly. I do think that I ran out of the fuchsia maybe when I was doing this one. Um, but this one, I added a lot more dye. So we have a lot more saturated sections, but there's still these layering of color in here. 
and I think that it's a lot of fun. And there's a few hints of the red and turquoise um, still. And then finally, with everything that was left, which I know that there was, I think there was some red, certainly there was teal. And I did one more colorway. But I actually think that these four colors go really nicely together, um, especially, I guess, these three on the end. But you could, you know, mix them and do some really cool kind of fade project with them. But when I was hanging all this up to dry after washing it, I, I felt really excited about all of these variety of colors that we got, just starting with four separate colors. And yes, they mixed like while they were in the pots or in the uh, wash basin, but they were still separated and I didn't mix other tones outside of it. And so even though I'm just one dyer and I was able to get all of these different colorways with the same four colors, it's just like imagine what someone else might create with the same yarn bases and even doing the same techniques. Someone else might decide to do something completely differently. But I really do enjoy dyeing yarn with these tulip one-step tie-dye. I don't add any vinegar. You can add heat, you can instead use thyme. I think that with some of the techniques, if I were to uh, maybe if I were to leave time, some of the colors might spread a little more. Uh, but I think the very first dry rub ones that I ever did, I let sit overnight before washing it. But if you steam it, if you have a dedicated steam pot to steam it, then that helps things sort of move a little quicker. But yeah, I'm just really, really excited. I think of all of these, my favorite is probably this one. I love the, the color separation and how much white was left behind. But I really, when I was doing the dry rub live stream, I really wanted to get four distinct colors. And I'm thrilled that I was able to. How reproducible each one of these are, that might be harder to like get multiple in the same colorway unless you pre-measure out the amount of dye that you wanna use for each skein because it is just sort of a random Feel. But that's one that makes this technique something that is really, really fun to do. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed these live streams. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe, <laughs> please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.